Thank you. Welcome once again. And in this particular session, as I just mentioned, that we are going to talk about the incremental data mining. I am Kablish Tiwari uh, from the Department of Computer Science, Bits Pilani, Pilani Campus. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to interact with you and talk on this very interesting topic. However, this topic is, uh, this discussion, this uh, session is only going to be of the introductory into the nature. I would like to introduce all the things that are there and with respect to the, some of the problems that we have. So, slides is changing or not. So I think slide is not changing. Why it is not changing? Yeah. So this talk is not going to be comprehensive, but however, it would give you a high level overview that what are the things into the domain and some of the some of the flavor of that particular problem that how to solve that particular thing. Initially, uh, the plan of this talk is into this way that uh, initially I would like to talk about something about the data mining. Then we would talk about some of the one of the important tasks that is called the association rule mining. We will be seeing few important things, FEP, FEP2, daily, and SWF that are actually used for the incremental data mining. Then we will go to another application that is called the clustering. Try to see that what are the available approaches over there. In case of the data mining, a lot of data is coming to you. What you can do and how can you improve with this kind of uh, settings. So these things are going to come. So let us start by just uh, for the just for the sake of completeness, it is a first lecture. So uh, let us just start by talking that let's assume that we don't know about the data mining. So uh, let me just, just for the sake of completeness, uh, talk a few minutes uh, with you on these uh, topics that what is the data mining, how what is the important part, and what are why it is done. So very first question that the people ask about that what is the data. Data is any factor values. Whenever you have a factor values, you are storing into the database. So it is going to be the data. What is information? What is information? Information is uh, something that comes out of the data when you apply some kind of processing on that. What do I mean by this? I mean by this is this that uh, let's assume that some facts are given to you. You are storing in your database. You are storing in some places. It is your database. Database means it contains data. Now you apply some kind of processing. And when you apply some kind of processing, you get information. For example, uh, you may think that list of the, all the participants who are here, I can think as a data. If I, if I want to find out an analogy, I can tell that the list of the, all the people who are attending this particular seminar is a data. Then what would be the information? If I ask a question and apply a processing that how many people whose name is starting by A, if I ask a question that how many people are there whose name is starting by A, so it would be an answer. For example, 25 people who are actually whose name is starting by A, this is going to be the information. I can apply another kind of uh, processing on that. I can ask that how many people whose name is starting by B. This can be another number, for example, 15. This is another information. So from the same data, from the, from the same data, we have obtained the information, and you can see that this information is not inside your data. Whether this 25 and 15 is written somewhere in your list? No, because your list has your list contains the names of the people. This 25 and 15 is not written anywhere. This 25 and 15 is not written anywhere. But it is coming out because we are doing we are investing some kind of processing on that. So after the processing, what we get, we get the information. You can ask multiple questions that how many people are starting by B, C, how many people are names are starting by Z, and for example, 0, 2 people are there. Then I can again ask, let's assume that this is what you have. In the second scenario, assume that this is what you have. Now you can again ask the question, how many people are attending the session? How many participants are attending this session? If I ask this question again, again you have to uh, deploy some kind of processing over here. And you get a number, for example, 500. 500 people are attending this session. What is this? This 500, this 500 number is again an information. This 500 number is again an information. What is this? What is this part? For this kind of computation, for the, this kind of computation, when I have used this data to find out the number 500, here the 500 is information, but this part is actually data. So 
so whenever you are applying some kind of processing you are going to get some information out of the data so the thing which what earlier information becomes data when you are going to apply the process processing so very important part is this that whatever you are going to store somewhere if you are going to apply some kind of processing on that you are going to get only information again if i for example i can ask that what is the summation of these digits again you get a information that it is 5 so whenever you are going to apply a processing and then at that particular time this information becomes what this information becomes data so from the data you are going to get the information this information again becomes a data if you store it and then if you again apply some some kind of uh, processing you are again going to get the information so there is a very interesting term that people talk about there is there that is called the knowledge then what is the knowledge what is the knowledge very important term that what is the knowledge we have talked about the data and information we have talked about the data and information what is knowledge very important term how come the knowledge is coming from the data can we get get some kind of knowledge can we generate some kind of knowledge this is a very important and fundamental question that we have because we have the data what do i mean by the data data is some of the things that we have done some observations that we have out of these observation can i get some knowledge what is the knowledge the knowledge is let me tell you that what do i mean by the knowledge so let's assume let me tell you that this data so that you can understand this what this data is let's assume that i have some uh, some some item for example uh, you have some item i'm not going to define it and you measure some of the properties out of this for example one property i am going to call it x1 and the property i am going to call it x2 and the property i am going to call it x3 let's assume that these properties if you measure the x1 has come out to be 7 uh, x2 comes out to be 4 and x3 comes out to be 9 let's assume that it comes out to be like this and uh, let's assume that there exists some function if you supply these values over here x1 x2 and x3 and you supply these values over here you get the value you get the value as an output as 2 so you may relate this particular line it is 7 4 9 and 2 you can find out that this particular thing is there they are related so this particular y it is a target value maybe something you can think that uh, there is a house and in house in, in that house that 7 uh, could be that uh, what is the uh what is the area for example 7 is multiplied by something it is just divided by for example 100 what is the square meter of the uh, house area what this 4 could be how many rooms are there this 9 could be uh, some other uh, thing maybe you got some other properties are there using these properties you come up with this kind of value for example 2 okay we have come up this particular function we come up with this particular property and let's assume that this function exists this let's assume that this function exists if this function exists and uh, and it is not told to you so how can you store this particular data you store this particular data for various observation for various values you are going to store this particular quantity that what is the quantity over here for various set of values you are going to store that what is the y value that you are going to obtain when you are applying the function this complete table you can make but if i tell you this particular function very important part i am going to tell that if i tell you that what this particular function is for example it function i am not sure about this but let's assume that this function is 2 multiplied by x1 plus 3 multiplied by x2 into x3 uh, mod 15 let's assume that this function is like this i am not sure about this if this if this function if the exact format of this particular function is known to you then do you need to store this table into your memory no you need not to store this particular thing because you know that whenever any item is coming you can immediately apply over here and find out that what is the value over here then this particular table is not needed to you any particular data any particular table is only needed to you when you don't have the complete knowledge that how the things are decoded over there if you know this decoding if you know this coding then this complete database collapses to this particular only single expression single single equation and this equation is actually the knowledge understand what is the knowledge knowledge is that that knowledge is that particular formulation by which this particular data has been generated if you know that particular formulation you need not to have any data because everything you know about the data now very important part is this that if you have a 
you, because you don't know anything because let's assume that some phenomena is happening into the world and you want to understand that particular phenomena so you collect the database out of this for you measure various of the various values out of this and various tar target values out of that and you make a table out of that you want to find out that what is that equation that relates these thing over here your task is to find out that what is the function that actually relate these thing if you can know this then for the unknown thing for when an unknown thing comes you can discover that what is the value that there could be filled and even these things are not needed you know that given these values immediately i can find out this value so why i have to invest so much uh, space to store all these things so this is what the knowledge is what is the knowledge that coming up coming up with this kind of formula okay we have few minutes back talked about the data and information data and information so uh, my question is that uh, if the data is given to you as i told you that this data is given to you and information could be that if you apply some kind of processing out of this you can only get some subsets of this or uh, some some of the digest from this particular thing some of the consolidations from this particular data only that thing you can get then how can i extract the knowledge from this particular data very fundamental question given the data how can i find out this particular function this is a very fundamental question that actually machine learning or artificial intelligence or deep learning try to come up with so uh, to solve this particular problem try to understand this particular uh, this particular moment you should understand this particular fact that whatever data is given to you is actually irrelevant if you have the knowledge if you have the knowledge all the data collapses otherwise we would say that give me more data give me more data if if a new data is coming to you and you want to find out the what value come over here then you the 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 basic method would be that you actually somehow want to know that somebody tell you that what is the what was the value of this thing and if you know this then from your database you can get this particular value somebody is not telling you then you have to infer it and this is what the problem is this is what the problem of the knowledge discovery knowledge comes from philosophy knowledge uh, discovery of this particular knowledge is not easy and actually it is actually the subject matter of today's class we are going to understand that how can we develop the how can we uh, get the knowledge what i wanted to tell you that from the data you can only get the information you cannot get the knowledge from the data you cannot get the knowledge knowledge comes from the philosophy knowledge comes from the philosophy sometime you sit somewhere on stone and find out that looks like that these are related in this and then you verify verify on data on the data you can only verify on the data you cannot find out that what is the knowledge on the data you can verify that okay whatever you are thinking is right and it is actually can be actually related to that particular data try to understand so how can we find out this data is a very complex task it is not a direct task because as i told you even the data you can only get the information not the knowledge so this is the task of data mining this is the task of data mining when we want to discover the discover the knowledge uh, knowledge discovery in the databases it will lot of databases are given to you and you want to verify that thing so somehow you, whatever you are going to do to discover this particular knowledge is called the knowledge discovery in databases and in this particular scenario this data mining that we are going to do is going to be only a particular tool for that goal of data mining why we are going to do that to provide efficient tools and techniques so that we can do the knowledge discovery into the databases so if you want to do the knowledge discovery into the databases please note it's not a single database it is databases multiple databases are if you have then you can do the things because you can verify on the multiple databases your knowledge so you have to do these kind of things these five steps actually five steps are standard steps people talk about that these five things if you do then we can uh, do the knowledge discovery in the databases first step is to collect the data because if you have the data then only you can go ahead deal with the incorrect and the missing data because when you are collecting the data there could be some data that is not available how to handle that depends upon the kind of uh, uh, depend upon the scenario in which you are and uh, then using that particular setting you, you can do something 
so depends upon the what kind of scenario you are in you are going to deal with the incorrect and the missing values then you do the transformation of the data in such a way so that it can efficiently be processed then the fourth and main step that is the data mining step says that you are going to develop algorithmic tools that can actually somehow help you to discover this particular knowledge from the data and after that you have to do the interpretation and evaluation that how good we are you do the visualization and presentation to understand that whatever you have learned how good it is so this is what the task of the data mining is when we go for the data mining when we do the data mining our task is to do the knowledge discovery in the databases and it involves five tasks out of them knowledge discovery and the database out of them only one part is that this particular thing that is called the data science or the data mining so data mining is not very easy task it involves many thing if you want to uh, develop those kind of thing if you want to get the if you want to get the information then uh, knowledge uh, from the data then you have to do multiple thing one of them is the information retrieval means when the information is there how can i obtain that you have to use the statistics because the statistics give you handle that how the things are actually behaving what is the general behavior of the things machine learning machine learning tells about the automated way of going ahead with the things because we think that the machine should by itself do some kind of experiments and tell that looks like that if i do these things into this way the right answers are going to be obtained so sometimes of sometimes some types of uh, uh, convex optimizations and these kind of things are actually utilized into the machine learning domain so machine learning machine learning is an important area that actually deals that automated learning i am not going to tell that how to learn machine learning means automated way of learning definitely if you have the database you have to have the database systems also you have to get the understanding so that you can quickly get the data database system data mining also involves the algorithms and when we talk about the algorithm algorithm means algorithmic perspective means how good my algorithm is efficiency and correctness when we bring the algorithmic part means what whatever you are going to do they should be correct so correctness is uh, correctness and the efficiency part is being introduced by this particular algorithmic part so very complex kind of task that we are going to do over here so this is the general this was the general introduction of the machine uh, of the data mining that actually we want to uh, do over here now i would like to introduce a small problem and with respect to that problem we would talk that how we can carry out the later discussions so let us uh, discuss this particular a very important problem that the people talk about multiple number of time into the uh, data mining domain it is called the association rule mining what is association rule mining so it was association rule mining is actually a market basket analysis and actually what happens you you assume into this way that let's assume that there is a departmental store okay departmental store so multiple things are there you can say that there is soap you can think that there is a there is milk there is bread there is butter there is apple okay multiple things are there so these are the items that i have so i am going to have the set i that can have that have i1 i2 im these are the items maybe the first item could be uh, as i told you that first item could be the soap second item could be the milk third item could be butter these items are given to me and now when somebody comes that he picks few item for example he purchases soap and bread and he goes away so he creates a set where he puts soap and bread this set is called a transaction because he have created a transaction everybody is clear about this that there are few transaction the first transaction that uh, he have purchased somebody has came and purchased something t2 somebody have come here purchased something for example butter and apple what is t3 the third third transaction maybe somebody has come who have purchased for example milk and bread so what are the item these transactions are given to me so this kind of things is very common into the into the market basket analysis where you say that you go to the shopping mall and do some kind of purchasing and whatever item you are going to purchase ti whatever transaction you are going to give it is going to be the subset of the item which are available over there 
differently whatever items are available in your market you are going to buy a subset of that so uh, hope this condition is clear to you so what we want to do with this if if this particular database is given to me if this this kind of database this transaction database is given to me this transaction database is given to me what i wanted to do uh, uh, i can understand that when somebody is purchasing milk i can find out this kind of relationship that if whenever somebody is purchasing milk he is also purchasing bread say 70% of the time can i purchase can i find out this kind of useful information from the data can i find out this particular thing is after data yes you can you have to visit the database and it, it may be possible that whenever the person is purchasing milk see in those cases where a person is also purchasing bread find out that what is their uh, what is their proportion and then you can find out what the probability of the person purchasing milk and bread both if you can do this kind of information you can utilize it in multiple way for example if you on your shop some day if if bread is not there let's assume that on some day on your shop bread is not there person coming from the mill would not purchase milk from your shop they would go to some other shop they would ask that do you have milk and bread you would be telling no i have only milk they would tell them okay i will go to somebody else and purchase milk and bread so this kind of analysis is very much needed that if you know that these things are related so what you can do you can put those things uh, together so that the person uh, can purchase those item and by this you would be able to get the more profit from your business so this kind of uh, this kind of understanding is called the association rule and it is represented using this particular formula x implies y means what whenever the person is purchasing x he is also purchasing y where x and y could be set i was just giving one example there could be a set also for example i can say that whenever somebody is purchasing for example milk plus bread okay looks like that he is also going to purchase butter okay well, in this kind of uh, thing i can also infer so it what does it mean that uh, it means that if two put two things the person when the person purchase two things then he is going to purchase the butter so the all these kind of uh, all these kind of the associations are going to be represented by this particular formula that tells that this is a association rule here you know that x x is also a subset of the item y is also a subset of item and there is nothing common between these two items there is anything common between here and here doesn't make any sense all right so whenever we want to do these kind of analysis we actually focus on two important uh, terms that is called the support and confidence we want to go ahead with the two kind of thing that is called the support and confidence what is the support support for the for example x implies y is going to be the probability of x union y what is the confidence confidence of x implies y is going to be the probability of y given x so uh, let us see this using uh, an example for example if x given y we want to find out that what is the support and confidence for this thing and let's consider this particular database so in this particular database uh, support is going to be told as what x union y x union y the places where x and x and y are both there so in this how many examples are we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 examples are there out of them at how many places x and y both are there i think x and y both are here here and here three places so the answer is going to be 3 by 10 everybody is clear about this very simple that what is the support now we want to talk about that what is the confidence the confidence the probability is given by this particular formula it is a conditional probability that says that what is the y given x so now uh, you actually think changes you only want to look at those places where you, there uh, is x is given so you just consider those places where x is given so x is given here here and here i think these are the places where x is given how many such cases are there you can see that there are how many 1 2 3 4 5 there are five places out of them how many have the y so you see that here also the three places y we have so 3 by 5 so in this way you find out that what is the support and confidence if any kind of uh, any kind of uh, association rule has these kind of support and confidence we want to find out them so we have seen this thing till now we have discussed what we have discussed that if 
if this kind of uh, association rule is given to me it, it is going to be very beneficial for my business because i would be able to adjust the item that are there in my shop in such a way so that more uh, sales can be attracted all right so if a data is given to you and you want to find out this kind of association rules what is the step how you would go ahead with that what is the solution what is the standard solution till now we are only go going to talk about that what are the standard solutions so what is the standard solution for that what is the standard solution for that so the standard solution says that you have to do two things that one one such algorithm is called the a priori algorithm and uh, actually uh, this uh, this can be written in this way i think here you just see this thing that it is a two step process we are going to discuss the a priori algorithm very soon the things are going to be a two step process okay uh first thing is that find all the frequent item set first thing is going to be the find all the frequent item sets what is the frequent item set that you find out those uh, subset of the item because you know that in in your shop i number of items are there you find out a subset of that particular thing say x such that the support for that particular thing is greater than the specified minimum for example as you know that i am going to supply support uh, give you the support and confidence these two parameter if the minimum support uh, if this particular thing item has a support greater than the minimum support then i want to find out i want to generate all such kind of all such kind of sets okay so by we have used the support and then we can use the confidence by saying that if because this particular set frequent item set contains all the subsets all the subsets of the i all the subsets of i which are actually going to have the support greater than some value so definitely uh, so definitely you can if you find out a set over here for example if i say that uh, i find out x and there is some superset w is also available so what is left what is extra into the w because w is a superset i can say that w minus x is a superset so i say that x implies w minus x if support of x divided by support of w is greater than some c minus another property that we are going to satisfy so if support of x divided by support of w is greater than c min then we say that x implies y where y is w minus x y is equal to w minus x is going to be a uh, association to so whether the task is clear once again let me just quickly summarize that what i told you that i told you this thing that uh, one minute yeah i told you this thing that uh, that you find all frequent item sets first you have to find out that which are the item frequent item sets and by seeing that the all the subsets which are actually having the support greater than the s min that is the minimum support that has been sub supplied to me then when all the all such sets are given to me then i would find out any set and its sub superset i say that this is w this is x and what is extra over here i say that y that is w minus x so i say that x implies y is equal to going to be a uh, is going to be a uh, association rule if support for x divided by support for w if i find out this value to be greater than the another uh, in the support criteria that is actually if it is greater than the c min this is how we are going to find out this so interestingly that when you see this particular problem you see that this problem is very mechanical because if the items are given to you for every item you have to find out that who is the bigger set and then you can find out this particular value and find out uh, generate the association rule so this particular second part is very straight forward the second part is very straight forward only difficult part is the first one so how to get the first part is actually the research problem many other time people talk about that how to do this particular first part so uh, various algorithms are there that can do this particular thing one of them one of them is a priori we are going to discuss that particular thing very soon and uh, then we would try to see that how we can uh, tan that particular algorithm into the incremental way so let us see an example once again that uh, let's assume that we have a database that is given to us and we want to find out who are the frequent item set once again this algorithm says this a priori algorithm says 
that uh, the task of the frequent uh, the priority algorithm is to give you the all frequent item set so i would like to tell you using an example that would be easy to follow let's assume that this is the database that is given to you everybody can see this that uh, here few items are there that that in set i looks like to be a b a b c d e f you can see the items which are here and this and the multiple transitions are the for example fifth transition contains the item c and f somebody has fifth transition is c d and e purchase person has purchased c d and e so its transition is this so really multiple transitions are there so the priority algorithm says that you go label wise first you consider the things of the label 1 then you consider the item of the label 2 then you consider the label 3 then you consider the items of the label n whatever the maximum is possible the algorithm says that you start by the constructing the candidate who are the candidate so item 1 all the items a b c d e f you try to see that what is the support for them by just counting so uh, what is the support for a if i want to find out what is the support for a try to see that a is here here 2 3 4 5 6 that six places a is there i say that six how many places b is there if i want to find out what is the support for for example d support for d is how many so d is here 1 2 3 support for d is 3 okay let's assume that the minimum uh, minimum support that is needed is being set as in such a way so that it should be greater than 3 let's assume that somebody want support to be greater than 3 so uh, in between if you want to ask any question i just wanted to just uh, add this thing that you can please type okay yeah people were right writing something but i am very sorry that i could not see this now uh, onwards i would see i try to connect with you from okay sorry i was not seeing that particular thing okay so uh, let's assume that it is greater than 3 so if uh, If that threshold is set in such a way so that the value greater than three is needed, so value three or below are actually not okay. So I can delete these things. I can say that one item set when the I'm going to uh, because I have to find out the subset of what I. What is I? I contains A, B, C, D, E, and F. Looks like that these items are there. F is there. Yeah, F is there. So I have to find out the subset of this thing. So I'm going to find out L1 means those subset uh, those items which have only one item over here. So A, B, C, E are the items which have the support greater than three. Make sense? Okay. Now I want to find out L2 where two item subset here two items would be there. So how can I go ahead with this? So there is a property called anti monotone property that actually tells that uh, that two things uh, you try to make the uh, make the three items uh, two item sets using this one item sets only because anything that is actually not uh, not frequent all the subsets are also not frequent so uh, can i can i how can i combine this and how can i make so you can combine a and b you, you get ab a and c you get ac a and e you get ae then you combine bc B C and B E and then C E. All these things are candidate for you because using A and B, A B C E, you can generate these six things. So they are the candidate for the next thing. C two is equal to going to have these things. I have to go to the database to find out what is the support for them. For example, what is the support for A B? I have to find out here. So can you help me find out find out this? So A B is here, A B is here, A B is here, A B is here, A B is here. The support for A B is five. Am I missing somewhere? I think it is five. Okay, yeah. Support for this is five. Similarly, you find out that what is the support for A C, uh, A E, B C, everything. You will be able to get these numbers. Again, here we can see that since we want the number should be greater than three, so these. these three things don't qualify to be frequent who are the frequent ac and bc i think frequent are ab ac and bc ab ac and bc they are frequent on the going on the same line i would be utilizing this set which set i would be utilizing this set to find out three item because two item set it is then i can utilize this to find out the three items 
combine A B and A C, what I get? I get A B C. I combine these two things. If I combine this thing, I get A B C again A B C. So every time I'm going to combine anything, I'm going to A B C only. So the candidate set becomes A B C. I find out that what the support for A B C it is four, therefore it is also being supplied. And using A B C, I cannot make anything of the greater size. So no frequency set uh, is going to be introduced. Uh, Further over here, make sense? All right. So, who are the frequent item set? A, B, C, E, A, B, A, C, B, C, A, B, C. These these items. Okay. So, again, let me just quickly go here and tell you that what we have discussed few minutes back. Few minutes back, we have discussed that if you want to create what, if you want to generate the association rules, so that you find the frequent item set this this thing we have done just now second part is this that generate the association rule second part how to do that we have to find out something and it's super set i'm trying to see that if this value is greater than c min then we are going to say that it is going to be utilized all right so again this thing as i told you that uh, these things are uh, given to me so i for everything i have to find out who is a super set for example, for A, superset could be this and this and this. So possibilities are when I'm going to combine this and this, it is going to be A implies B. When I'm going to combine this and this, A implies C is a candidate. When applying this and this, it says that A implies B, C is going to be the candidate. Whether they are right thing, I have to find out what is the support for X means what is the support of support for A if I want you know, this is going to qualify or not. I have to find out what is the support for A. I have to divide by the support of W. That is the support of A and B. Support for A and B is 5. As you know that here the value is 5. Support for A is equal to 6. It will, the value comes out to be 6 by 5. Let's assume that this second value that is C min is also provided as. Let's assume that this value is 1.22. So now you know that how to go ahead with this. All the possibilities we are going to generate, all the possibilities we are going to generate, these are all the possibilities, taking something, finding out that what is the thing, then we apply this particular formula, the value, if the value of is greater than 1.22, then we are going to say that they are green otherwise, right? Red means they are not able to obtain the enough support, green means they are able to obtain the support. So who are the association rules for this particular uh, database? These are the association rules. This is how we have created the association rules. So till now we have understood that a particular method by which we can uh, generate the association rule. Now the interesting part comes. Everybody is okay with this. So now we have, I think I'm, I have done the um, task of the foundation that you understand that what is the task that we are going to do and uh, how to go ahead with the solution. Now, everybody, please try to understand that if this particular database is, let's assume that this particular database is given to you, you have found out that who are the frequent item set. Let's assume that you solve it and find out the frequent item set. How much in, how much you have, uh, how much, uh, one minute. So what I wanted to tell you, very important thing, that a database was given to you, you have find out that who are the frequent item sets by investing the processing power that is proportional to the database size. This part is clear, very simple. So if a database is given to you, you want to find out who are the frequent item sets, you have actually applied some kind of processing, find out who are the frequent item set, but by applying this amount of processing, you have to invest the processing, then only you can get it. But after that, what has happened that your data database has changed and it has become D dash. There is some change. What is the change? That there is some delta plus something has been added in your database or delta minus something has been deleted from your database. So you get the new database. So if you new database is given to you and you want to find out the association rules again you have to find out the f dash 
question is this that how much investment in processing investment you have to do order of d dash this much number of processing you have to do to get this particular item to get this particular item but database size is very large you know that the most of the time database size is very large as compared to the things which have changed only one thing has been changed complete database not been changed so how can i uh, why should i invest this much time to find out this is there a way the question is very important question is this that is there a way to go from here to here by investing just delta plus and delta minus amount of processing is there a way that i can go from this particular place i can go into this particular direction otherwise what is the way that you have a into the general setting what is the way you have a database in the general setting what is the thing that you have a database you get the f if your database has been changed you again invest the thing and go over here so lot of processing is needed my task is my question is my um, wishes that is there a way that i can use this particular thing and to generate the f dash by investing only data plus plus data minus amount of time if i can do it it is going to be called as a incremental data mining and this is what actually we are going to discuss this is the topic of our today's session okay so a few minutes back we have discussed this that uh, what we have discussed that we have discussed that this is the database that you had this is the database let's assume that there were nine transactions uh, these let's assume these nine transactions are there these are the nine transactions that you have what happened that this part is deleted this part is deleted this is delta minus this is delta minus and a few a new part has been introduced that is called the data plus delta plus this has been introduced so what is your new database what is the database this is the database this is the database that you have now you have this database i am going to call it that the d dash this is the database that you have earlier you had this database now you have this database how to find out the solution on this by using the previously stored because for this you know that you had a solution f was this just the solution is f dash how can i use this to find out this using delta plus delta minus this is what we wanted to discuss so everybody uh, is comfortable with this that the new database is actually original database something has been deleted and something has been added delta minus is deleted delta plus is added how to do that so we are going to see two algorithm multiple algorithm first two are the fup and fup2 algorithm first two are these two algorithm that we are going to see what is fup algorithm let me tell you for fup means fast update algorithm so this is the algorithm the reference is provided to you you can just see this that uh, this is the fast update algorithm we will try this algorithm to do the fast update on that so a uh, lot of mathematics don't see this you would be seeing everything using an example so that it becomes clear to you fup algorithm only one thing is this that fup algorithm works when there is only delta plus it does not work for the delta minus fup algorithm works when something is added to the database so this was the original database and this part is actually extra so this is the complete database new database is this whether this part is clear to everybody students you will please mention that you understand this thing that it is clear that the, this was the original first database and this part has been introduced more so new database is this and i want to find out the uh, frequent item set for this complete database okay as i told you that fup only handles the plus minus part is not handled by this fup algorithm so how to go ahead this with this again we have to see that initially this was the database everybody knows and this was the frequent item set we have seen we have few minutes back seen that how to find out this so the fup algorithm says very interestingly that for the new items which are coming to you for each of the item you do the processing into this this particular set one by one so let me just do the processing for the one item set one item set is here just consider a b c e a b c e just consider these items what is the support for them support for them was 6 6 and 6 
so here you get the support for b and d here you get the support for d and f here you get the support for a b c and d let me count it so when the b has come when the b has come you are going to increase over here again b has come we are going to increase over here b initial value was 6 it becomes 8 everybody understand it becomes 8 8 divided by 12 why because nine things were there then three more things came so the, it becomes 8 by 12 okay it becomes 8 by 12 okay the value is 8 by 12 again similarly see the see the other values for the support for a is introduced by 1 so it becomes 12 initial support was 6 every for everybody was it was 6 so it becomes 7 what is the support for c you see the support for c has to been given 1 so it has also been increased by 1 support for e there is no support so the earlier support what was there support for e i think it was 4 so it remains the same so this is the same value 4 by 12 now you see that your requirement was this that it should be greater than 3 because out of 9 it was 3 so greater than 33% would be there so you see that looks like that it it has lost the support this particular last item has looks like that this has lost the support but there are few more thing apart from a b c e uh, let me forget about uh, b a b c e there are d and f are also there and you see that the support for d has been given by 3 by 3 and support for f is 1 by 3 1 by 3 is again a smaller number you can forget about this you can see that here new things which have come it is also checking that that for f it is 1 by 3 so it is going to have the lesser support for the d it is 3 by 3 for the d it is 3 by 3 looks like that d is going to have the larger support then you again go to the complete database and search that for the support for d in the complete database support comes out to be 6 by 12 so it qualifies so you put new item set is going to be this that you are going to pick how many items these three items from here and one is d and therefore four items are going to be put into this particular table so this is this is a method by which you can update uh, if you feel what you says that this is the method by this you can update this one item set similarly you update the for the two item set also similar in the similar way you can update for the two item set and you can get the what are what is the l2 then l3 l4 everything you can update into the similar way and you can get the get the solution so we have seen that when the data is is going to be added something and it becomes d dash then what to do f u p l got thing that can give you whatever results you had earlier it can give you a new result make sense next algorithm is just an improvement on the previous one this is called the fvp2 algorithm fast update to algorithm important of this algorithm is this that it can handle addition as well as the subtraction both the things it can handle okay fvp2 algorithm can handle insertion and deletion both very good so how it does so actually uh, th there is nothing more than this particular simple equation that say says that uh, because you know that this has been gone this has been introduced so you see that what is the support that has been gone what is the support for for example if you want to find out a particular set if you have a particular set let me call it x okay support suppose that you have a set x support you have a set suppose you have a set x and you know that what is the support of support of that particular x and you know that delta minus is going out so you find out what is the support of that particular x in where delta minus you find out what the support in delta minus you see that what is the support for support for x into the delta plus you know that what is the support in the complete database you know that in, in the complete database you know that what is the support for this thing so if you want to find out the new support what would be the value i think everybody can tell me now that if you want to find out the new support so let's assume that the if, if let me give you an example initial support let's was 10 support lost is 3 support gone is 5 so can you tell me that what is the new support can anybody can any student can write this that what is the value because 10 was there 3 has gone so minus 3 5 have new obtained plus 5 so this is the what the equation is very simple equation you can write that count of 
this particular expression that what was the initial value it says that what was the initial value what has gone and what has obtained this is a very interesting thing so whatever original original table you had for each of the item you see that what is gone and what is obtained and you know that if you want to find out this thing how much uh, how much processing power you have to invest into this proportional to the delta plus and delta minus only so very easily you can find out the what is the support for new things in by investing this particular amount of time only interesting idea so fup2 how it works as i told you that fup find out that things which are going what is the support for for each of the item that are there into your app for each of the item which are there into your frequent item set for each of the things which are here you find out that what has been gone what has been added and you then you can modify the value over here very simple very simple way to do that make sense on all these things how much gone and how much obtained can be very easily obtained by what just seeing this particular portion please note that at this particular moment you should be cautious about one thing and that thing is this that if something because for the things which are here you can update this value but for the things which are not there how can you update them it may be possible something new can have become uh, frequent how can you find out that particular thing so therefore there is a one more idea over here that apart from the things which are actually uh, frequent you are also going to maintain a set that says that these are items these items are not frequent but still i am going to maintain them what is their uh, what is their count and that's the biggest problem with this algorithm because number of things which are possible they are very large and therefore the memory requirement of this particular algorithm is very large so we have seen two algorithm one algorithm that can have only addition second algorithm fp2 that can handle the addition and deletion both all right so there is one variation into this particular setting is called the daily that is a very interesting kind of uh, version that actually talks about you know that i just wanted to tell you this very small thing that let us assume that you want to cut so there could be scenario when this particular set is very large there could be scenario when this particular thing which are actually added or deleted would be very large and doing the processing for them becomes very difficult what would you do in that particular thing if even this particular set is very large then what to do so there is a interesting observation that we will say that i just want to ask a very simple question from you let's assume you have a database where a lot of numbers are there for example these many numbers are there how many numbers are there i'm not going to read that let's assume that the 100 1 2 3 4 5 600 million items are there let's assume that you have a set where 100 million numbers are there and i want to find out what is the summation of all these numbers what is the summation of all these numbers so how much processing power you have to invest proportional to uh, proportional to 100 million proportional to 100 million because you have to add all these numbers you have to invest lot of things is there any better way to do that so interestingly that if you are actually not very much hunting for the exact value you are okay with the some near by value for example if the summation is going to be 100 you are okay with the 99 or 101 you are if you are able to tolerate some kind of errors so the idea says that you only sample for example 1000 points randomly pick 1000 points from this particular set how many item 1000 items and uh, find out the summation of 1000 item and then you multiply whatever summation you are going to get with this particular quantity 10 to the power 5 because 1000 has been done it is 10 to the power 7 so you multiply by by this particular quantity you will be getting the summation near to whatever your solution is if you are not happy with this you can uh, repeat this algorithm for say 10 number of times and whatever this this 10 numbers you are going to obtain you take the median of that and then a better mechanism so actually i would not go into that probability uh, description of all these things but actually these things uh, 
actually give me a handle of the things that we have actually obtained. Okay. So uh, if you want to estimate, for example, if you want to estimate the value, you are actually of the complete database. You are going to say that on the on only m portion of the things you have. If you on the small portion, if you find out the this particular quantity, then you multiply the total number of items over here, how many samples you have taken and divide the total number of items over here. So you would be able to get the estimate of D minus. So the same thing that we have just talked about. So whatever value you are going to obtain by this, they are actually going to be into a particular uh, range. They may not be correct, but uh, actually uh, how many items you are using, uh, how many items actually, what is this thousand, what is this number based on that you can find out that they are bounded, these numbers are bounded. But actually, actually, actual, the summation that uh, you are going to get is actually bounded. So this is a way of estimation of the thing. Again, this is a very interesting algorithm. I say you that if you can see this, so you can find out the estimate of the things over here. Once again, let me tell you the algorithm, the complete thing. Let, put the every, let me put everything in one uh, go. So what I wanted to tell you that if the database was um, initial condition was this, that this particular set is very large. Initial assumption was this, that this particular set is very large. When this particular set is very large, you what you do, you take only small portion of this particular small portion of this and find out all the processing that we have done earlier. This particular processing that we have done that find out that what is the summation earlier for the item which are going to have the more uh, uh, more values for them you know that uh, this whatever computation you are going to do with a smaller set they are going to be bounded into the particular set if you find out that this particular uh, thing actually satisfies your requirement then you go and apply on the complete database otherwise you don't go to the complete database idea is clear so the idea is this that you are estimating that what is the thing that is going to increase and you are going to apply these kind of uh, processings only when your uh, estimate is such that that looks like that this item is going to be useful otherwise not. So this is another variation of the uh, algorithm that is very interesting to see. Okay. Next is also a very interesting idea that says that the sliding window filtering. Next idea is actually this that it is it talks about the sliding window filtering. What does it mean? It says that let's assume that all the items are coming to you and initially your database was this then I'm going to tell that this portion has been removed and this portion has been added. So you can think it as a sliding window. You can say that I'm going to consider these things and after that what would happen? After that it would happen that you again consider that there is something else and you consider this particular part, you consider this particular part for the for your processing. So you can one by one slide and find out that what is the things over here. Understand that you you here you you say that initially these things were there, then this thing has dropped and this thing has been introduced. So now these things are this is the database that that I have here. It is very important to understand that there is something that is that is you have to specify that what has come and what has gone. And after some regular interval, maybe you are going to do all these things at a regular interval. Okay, so how to deal this kind of thing? So the very interesting idea, this particular sliding window filtering puts a very interesting idea and very simple idea. It tells what you do that for this particular thing, you find out that what is for every portion, for every portion you apply the complete algorithm and find out that what is the for this particular thing you find out that who are the what are the one item set what are the two item set what are the three item set for this also you find out for this also you find out for this also you find out using percentage and what may happen that uh, that for everything you have actually for every small portion as i'm telling that you are going to is divide the things into small small portions if you want to find out that what is the things for this particular setting you maintain a separate table where you just cumul cumulative sum of all these items. You find out the cumulative sum of all these items. So that's straightforward. That immediately you can find out that what are the possible items which are and what is their support. If the support is greater than this, you can apply a filter and find out the solution for you. In the next time, what would happen when the when the when your uh, when your window would advance when your window would come over here? 
this portion you take and subtract from here subtract the value one from here and you take this portion and add this things into this particular table and by this you can actually apply the sliding window filtering into the system and uh, very interestingly you can find out the results very easily and uh, compact way so one application till now we have seen that it was a market basket analysis or the association rule mining next algorithm next problem that we wanted to see and uh, we want to see the incremental uh, way of solving that particular thing is the clustering so let us also investigate the clustering something everybody knows that what is the clustering in the, in these days and uh, you may say that for example few items are here and few items are here sometimes you have the well separated clusters you can do the center based clustering where you say that looks like that the here are the centers and the items which are near to this they are actually going to be into one particular set sometimes you want to say that uh, so sometimes you want to say that uh, that continuous continuity based clustering where you say that these items are very near so they are going to belong into one cluster these items are near so it is second cluster these items and these they are there is a clustering so all these things are into the third cluster another method is to do the density based clustering that can tell that looks like that these items are more dense so here is one cluster here is another cluster where the less dense items are there most of the time into the uh, into the medical domain when you do when you want to do some kind of uh, segmentation these kind of scenario arises when you find out that looks like that they, uh, for example this may be a, a kind of tumor or anything and this could be a healthy cells so you want to segregate those two things from one one thing from another and the clustering method could be that when you apply that there is some conceptual kind of uh, clustering where you say that things looks like that the things are conceptual for example you can say that looks like that uh, things are of the triangle and the square then you say that looks like here is a triangle here is a square so this is the one cluster this is the second cluster on the same line you can say that there are the things are into the circular way so you can say that these are the two circles they are these are the two tracks circular tracks so you can say that he that two clusters we have some of the item you can see that as as here they may have the they may get the membership of both the both the uh, both the clusters so this is a overall understanding that how we do the clustering so one very important method to do the clustering is what k means clustering what the k means clustering it is a uh, you know that it is k means clustering is a uh, prototype based clustering where into the space we think that there are few prototypes and all the other data items whatever the data items we have what are the data items are there they are going to be combined they are going to be linked to this particular prototype for example these data points would be linked to this particular thing because of the distance i can draw a line that can separate uh, and can be used as a Bernoulli region for these things so these items are here and these items are here so we can say that these are the two clusters and when we develop these kind of clusters after that what we do we say that points are actually irrelevant we say that the points are irre irrelevant everything that is important is only the their representative so by this we can say that we have actually uh, obtained a kind of uh, uh, obtained a kind of uh, coding for that particular data however we have seen that this method is not good this method is not good for incremental clustering so incremental if you want to do the incremental cl clustering means when one by one more items are coming to you you can apply this you cannot apply this kind of method over there there are few variations of this thing and uh, there are few variations of this particular method also but uh, we cannot uh, utilize that thing also for example less link and average link for this list these things are also there but we cannot also utilize this thing for uh, doing the doing the incremental clustering so uh, what i wanted to tell you at this particular moment that the most common general method they you cannot apply them to find out the incremental clustering once again what is the incremental clustering if you have discovered this kind of clusters for example this kind of clusters over here and later few more points are coming then how can you assign them because it may be possible that uh, many points have come over here so looks like that they becomes a single cluster and this becomes a new cluster those kind of things cannot be handled by this kind of setting so that's why k means is not suitable and in and variations its variations are also not suitable for doing the uh, incremental kind of clustering 
So how to go ahead with that? So we are going to see another method that is called the DB scan, density based uh, spatial clustering for the application with the noise. DB scan again, they, it was a KDD paper that appeared in the 1996. You can see this particular uh, link and explore this. So DB scan is an interesting algorithm that actually uh, how it goes. Let me tell you that how it goes. Very interesting idea that actually tells that for all the data points that you have into your space, for all the data points which are there into your space, you are you are categorizing them as a core point, border point, or the noise point. There are two parameters: one is the EPS and mean PTS. And using these points, you are going to uh, categorize all the points into the core, border, and noise point. What do I mean by that? So let me tell you, very interesting algorithm and very simple thing. So let me tell you that what is the EPS and mean PTS. EPS, maybe let's assume that 10 centimeter and the mean PTS is say five. So what do I mean by this? In your space, for every data points, you draw a circle of what radius? 10 centimeter radius. You draw for every data point, you draw a circle of 10 data points and try to see that how many other data points are there. It may be possible there are other data points, six data, other data points are there. It may be possible that how many data points are there? Six data points are there. If they are greater than five, that is mean PTS for me. Then this particular, no, this particular data point is called what? Core. So that this part is clear. Once again, lot of in my data space I, I pick any data point i have for every data point i have to do this i have to tell that whether that data point is core border or noise okay initially i am talking about the first time i am not talking about the incremental right now i am talking about first time when you are going to do this so there is a point two parameters are there eps and min pts you are going to draw a circle around this of the radius of what eps and try to see how many other points are there. So if there are other points, you say that six points are there. And I mean PTS is five. Then this particular point, this particular point, point which I was considering is called the core point. Make sense? If there are, so if you understand this, then definitely you would be able to tell that if there are only two points, then what would be this particular point? Whether this point would be core. If there are because I wanted five points. If there are two points only, whether it would be a core point? Answer is no, it would not be a core point. Okay, so if it is not a core point, it can be border point or noise point. Okay, to so find out whether it is a border point or noise point, we have to see something else. For example, if I was finding out, so now I would concentrate other points which are nearby me. These two points are nearby me. I would see that if they are core, if these two points are core, if any of them are core points which are nearby me, if any of them are core, if yes, then I would say that this point is border, border point. Everybody understand that what is the border point? Hmm? This point is a border point. Okay. So this point now this point is a border point. If this either this point could be a core point or this point. If, could be border point using this definition that if the number of point in near nearby area is less than mean points then you see that if any of them is core if any of them is core you say that that is a border point otherwise that particular point is what that otherwise if it is if any point is neither core point nor border point then it is a noise point everybody clear then this is going to be, if the point is neither core point nor a border point, then we say neither core point nor the border point, then it is going to be a noise point. Okay. Okay. So DB scan algorithm does not provide any kind of uh, uh, classific, any kind of uh, clustering for the point which are noise. For the noise point, it actually neglects them. It tells that, sir, your screen isn't visible. Somebody is writing Deepak is telling sir your screen is not visible. So Deepak, please try to see that I have opened this on the another machine also. And on that machine, I can see that things are there. However, there is a delay. Things are there. I can see that it is there. 
let me write the deepak over here d double e p a k so i have written the deepak on my screen but it has appeared now okay thank you all right so what i was telling you that first thing that i told you is this that all the data points which are which we have they are divided into they are divided into three categories core point water point and noise point and for the noise point i am not going to provide any kind of what any kind of for the noise point i am not going to provide any kind of uh, clustering so i am going to do the clustering for only core and border points okay all right so let me i think whatever i am writing it is there is a some small lag okay so how to do the clustering because we have our task is to do the clustering for the clustering it only consider the core points so out of the let's assume that these were the data points all the points may not be the core point only few of them will be the core point let me let me add a new page over here let me tell you how to do that so what i wanted to tell you is this uh, is this okay so let's assume that this is what your space is all the data points all the data points here you say that few are core point and few are border point few are noise points points so you say that i am going to do, going to only consider the core point not other point let's assume that these are the core point let's assume that these are the core point okay forget about other points these are the core points calgotin says that now you can do a dfs dfs depth first search to find out the item for example dfs would pick let's assume this particular item this particular item then it will see that who is the nearest point this is the nearest point then again nearest point and again nearest point no more nearest point so it becomes one cluster okay again it picks any other points which has not been given any uh, clustering so it gets this point find nearby point find nearby point find nearby point find nearby point no more points so i am here so i say that this is this is another cluster pick another point another core point that has not been given a label this so here nearby point nearby point apply dfs on that looks like that this is the cluster first cluster second cluster and third cluster three clusters we have discovered so all the core points are core points are given clustering cluster number they are given a cluster number so we have three points three type of points core point and the border point border point and noise point for noise we are not going to give any clustering label to them for border point you know that you do you recall the border point if there was a border point what does it mean that in its neighborhood there was a core point so border point would take the same label that was given to its nearby core point so by this it would also get some label so they got the that what is their membership so actually this is what the first cluster by including the border points also so when and where do i get the recording of this ongoing lecture so that would be clear to you later okay so hope it is clear to you it is a interesting idea that we actually want to discuss one minute so everybody understand this particular part that two parameters we have eps and mean pts using this we have actually divided the points into the core or border and noise and then after that on the core point we have applied dfs to find out the uh, find out the clustering and after that we actually got the complete clustering on that very important thing is this why we are discussing today because we want to do the things into the incremental way so if we want to do the things into the incremental way we can we is there a possibility of incremental doing things over here so let's assume let's see let's see this let's assume that into the db scale setting you have one cluster second cluster and few noise points are here let's assume that this is what the setting you have a new point is coming here it is a noise point because you see that in its cps never no other point is there okay so it is rejected it is also not been given anything it is it remains like that if new points comes here and sufficient support is being obtained into the nearby area then we create one more cluster and it becomes a new cluster you can see 
that are, are already existing cluster can be modified. The point can come here also, where into the nearby area, other cluster items are there. If other items are there, they are assigned any cluster membership. The same cluster is being given to this particular item also. So we call it the item has been absorbed. It may be possible the item come, can come here. When it come here, when it come here, you say that in its neighborhood, you find out two points which have a different cluster membership. Then you say that you can merge them because there is a connection available now. Then you can merge. You can say that instead of two clusters, now we have single cluster of this particular size. So by this, the DB scan can apply the incremental part. Okay. Similarly, we can see that what is done with the deletion. For example, if this was the setting and this point is deleted, what would happen? Delete it, no, no problem. No change. If you delete that particular thing, there is no change. Okay. If you delete this point, if you see, if you are going to delete this point, see that in, in nearby area, if there is very less support available, then you remove that particular clustering. You say that all other points becomes what? They are only Mm, they, they becomes a nice point and this you can do in a constant amount of time because only small uh, area is need to be explored so you can perform this operation to the order of one time if this item has been removed so there could be a split into the system you see that whatever items are there if the distance between them becomes greater than the eps radius if you see that few point are there and the distance between them becomes greater than the EPS radius, then you can split these two things. Split those th two things. It would require more time. But just the size of the items which are there into the cluster. So we assume that not many items are there into a single cluster. So this can also be done if it efficiently and does not require much time. If this item is removed, then it only shrinks. So you can see that addition and deletion both are possible with the db scan so the actual algorithm actually says this that you don't do all the things immediately you wait for some time for example if let's assume that this is the initial database on which you have applied the db scan you discovered that this this and this are actually the what they are the uh, they are the clusters and few new data items are coming for example here here and this uh, items are coming so Incremental DB scan algorithm says that you apply the DB scan on the new data and then you put as an overlapping. You can think that because every data point you can find out that what is there into its neighborhood and using the same logic that we have applied few minutes back, you can merge those things into the effective time, order of plus time. For example, if these items were added, order of plus time, you can actually find out that what is the classification, what is the clustering for these items. Order of plus time, you can find out where the clustering from for this item, and order of plus time, you can find out that where they are going to be merged. Very effective. Only thing is, only only problematic thing in this particular algorithm is this: that whenever an item is given to you in a space, and if I ask that, if I give you a particular point and ask you that who are the nearby points to me, it is not that easy to tell. So for that. For that, you may have to go for the special kind of data structures such as R tree or any any geometric interpretation based data structures that you can utilize, and then you can find out that uh, then this particular operation becomes cost and time. Because otherwise, this finding that who are the ne items near to me is going to take larger time, and this can also be merged over here by using this kind of methodology. So till now, what we have seen that DB scan is a candidate uh, method its incremental way incremental db scan algorithm can be utilized to do the incremental data mining for the cluster so uh, till after covering this we are going to the last part of our discussion that we are going to talk about the dennis train and here actually we want to talk about the clustering over evolving data stream means a lot of data is coming to you and you want to do some kind of clustering means where the things are there so uh, you can understand my talk a little things if you just visualize a very small phenomena that you have seen into the summers 
so uh, have everybody anybody gone to the their for example if i just let, uh, consider a summer um, summer afternoon and uh, let's assume that it's a very hot there and you are standing on a basketball court and somehow there is some clouds that had came and they are dropping some of the some of the rain raindrops what would you observe on the on the ground you would see that there is some there is some some dot because of the rain there is some dot there is some dot you see the dot but after that the dot drop get disappears because it's very hot it it get evaporated but somewhere else there is a dot appears somewhere else a dot appears and you see that multiple drops are getting appearing and then going on and you can think that uh, because you know that the quantity that let's assume that the drop has a quantity q after uh, t second it becomes q into 1 upon 2 to the power t because its quantity get reduced so after some time it gets evo completely evaporated evaporated and become zero so things are getting evaporated and after that you can see that uh, in, uh, you try to see that you like that there is a cluster then after some time you can find out here is a cluster somewhere else there is a cluster you can assume like that so we are going to talk on the same model where i am going to say you that uh, we are going to talk about damping model good we are going to talk about what damping model damped window model what does it mean that when the items are coming they are given a weight that if it is the most recent item and if we go t time before whatever item has was there it is going to be the weight upon 2 to the power t so what happened and, and here it is actually lambda is also there 1 upon 2 uh, to the power minus lambda t so lambda i was not telling here but lambda is also there so 2 to the power minus lambda t so every item is actually going to be given a weight that is this so what happened this item was going to have this weight then this has this this has this so all the items are going to have the lesser weights so if you see this thing you would be able to recognize that after some time things it is becomes irrelevant to consider those items so if you want to find out what is the what is the computation and solution on this particular portion that would only be available to you okay so what you want to do you want to get some kind of clustering on this particular new kind of data okay however one by one your data items are keep coming so what you are going to do that for all the item that you have you are going to assign this particular uh, weight so that when the items are going to have very less weight they are automatically get neglected this is my setting is the algorithm that we are going to see is called the den string and uh, again very old paper so you can you can see this paper the link is available over here you can see this particular paper so uh, how it does it actually does that uh, uh, it creates three kind of cluster core micro cluster potential micro clusters and the outlier micro cluster three kind of clusters it maintains and using these kind of clusters it actually try to tell you that what is the clustering so when a clustering needs is arrive the core micro cluster is being used core potential and micro note down core potential and micro three kind of clusters are there core micro cluster is one that if somebody ask you that give me the clustering so you you access the items which are there into the core micro cluster and then you apply a clustering algorithm on that and you tell that looks like that these are the clusters these are the items which are actually combined uh so it actually maintains because of this 2 to the power thing it actually use two important concept that tells that where is the center of item because number of items are coming to you it try to find out where is the center and center can be find out that if you apply this particular function that we have seen 2 to the power minus lambda t and you multiply that what is the portion over there and you divide by the weight weight is just a summation of all the items which are which are into a particular cluster is a summation of this particular weight and you find out the radius and you keep maintaining this thing so if this weight is greater than some threshold you say that okay these things are very recent if this weight is less than some 
uh, lambda time if i say that uh, for example beta time some some quantity then i say that looks like that they have the lesser weight and but they have potential to become the core microcluster very soon and others are outliers other others are outlier i have not not go into that much detail but you understand that three kind of structure it maintains and those structures are can be actually uh, updated into the incremental way because of this 2 to the power thing so if you have for example if uh, many values are there and, and you have the summation for example this value is v and if i add one more item over here if i add one more item over here and find out that and say that this value becomes v dash so v dash is nothing more than this that v multiplied by 1 by 2 plus the value of the recent item okay so in this way we can say that incrementally we can update all these values we need not to process all the previous values but after some time you have to only remove these items which are actually very old and have very less thing very interesting idea and this has been actually this particular kind of idea has been executed on the two different kind of three different kind of databases and you can see that they were actually um, the clusters were of the very random shape and this algorithm was able to give those kind of clusters very efficiently and even the when the person has uh, tested with a kind of uh, uh, kind of adding noise for example when the one type item with the noise few items from the second group has been added over there then also the system was able to give the correct kind of classification over there so this was the third algorithm that uh, we wanted to discuss today so hope this gives you some idea that how we can do the incremental kind of uh, clustering so that's all for my side today thank you very much for your attention it was great talking to you so it was a wonderful session hope you understood something i know that the time is very small and uh, giving the much complete mathematical detail may not be possible so uh, it is very difficult but if you have any question i would love to answer so floor is open for you if you have any question please let me know any questions please you may unmute yourself and ask the question if you have otherwise you can type also yeah uh, audience uh, if you have any question or query you can ask directly to sir once again i thank the organizers for providing me this opportunity to be present in front of you and talk to you it is a wonderful experience thank you very much